Welcome back everybody, you're watching the Esports Earnings Casters Invitational and we're going to be playing our losers match here. It's going to be uh, Rotterdam against Maynard. And we're going to be starting in a sec, they need to swap me to Observer. We're pretty much ready, I believe. As you just saw, uh, this bracket is, is well advanced at this point. It's just the loser's match and then the decider's match where Wadi is waiting. Imre took first place in that one group. I should get that video that O Gaming is using. They made a pretty cool hype video with like, you know, their uh, caster slash players in a tournament just kind of running around and uh, doing fun stuff. I didn't see it yet. You didn't see it? No. I'll, I'll have a look at it. Uh. Yeah, you need to see it for sure. It's fun. Let's jump straight into it. Maynard versus Rotterdam, the Australian Dread King. What's this guy called in the campaign with the Dreads? Tosh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Tosh against... Who, who does Rotty look like in the campaign? Jim Rayner? Nobody really. Like, I don't know. Uh, I mean, not in looks, but... I bet sir. I hope Rotty isn't watching back these vaults. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna hate me. Yeah. Roti is very self aware about his beauty. <laughs> uh, okay. Two SCVs making its way across the map. Seems like uh, Maynard only has one build on this map. He's just gonna do it in every single matchup. Uh, here we go. You sent them the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> He sent him there first, like right below this. I guess he's gonna be the three racks as well. Yeah, most likely. This build is. Uh, I'm very curious what it's gonna do against Rotti Stalker Opener. Rotti, the one thing that Rotti doesn't have is a fast mothership core because his second gas is quite delayed, I believe. So. Does Rotti scout early versus Terran? No, no, no. He scouts after Nexus every single time, and then he just scouts if there's a command center. If there's not a command center, he'll he'll try his best to defend whatever they're throwing. You know, if you but did that in Hollow Swamp, there'd be like a cheeky Turax Marines coming <laughs> and killing you. Yeah, yeah, I know. After 10. Believe me. Didn't I the Muslim know. do this against Stardust at, uh, in UK? Uh, a G3. Was that G3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gfinity yeah. something. Yeah, well, it was G3. The one Bunny won, I think. Yeah, he pulled SCVs one time and yeah. then Turax the other game. Legend! And then the hype was crazy, like it was the most garbage games ever, but just like a UK player winning in UK <laughs> against a Korean. It's like, yeah! It was America. pretty sick though. Ah oh, man, I really don't miss SEV pools at all. Those th that was so garbage to play against. Yeah, everybody got really good against them though, eventually, right? Like they weren't yeah, even doing it anymore. Everyone except for me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I kept losing games, but <laughs> speak for yourself. Ah, uh, not me. I'm talking about like real pro players out there, ah, you know, like, <laughs> like those that got the Archon sometime and stuff and like made yeah, it look yeah. silly, like Rain. There was a couple of yeah. CU pools against Rain where I was like, oh my god, how did this ever win against Protoss? Yeah, Rain was insane. It's really insane. That was around the time that they also won a GSL, right? Uh, yeah. That was also like I, I am San Jose when he made the finals. I lost yeah, the hero 4-3. Yeah, yeah. So Roddy scouted. He knows that this is coming, I think. Wait, how much yeah, did he see? Yeah, he already has two stalkers and uh, he has a mothership core. He can he already well, he gets one Reaper almost immediately. So this should be uh this should be relatively easy for Roddy, I feel like. Yeah. Third Reaper about to go down as well, yeah, third Reaper goes down as well as the SCV. So three Reaper, Reapers went down. Wow. And he uh he damaged the stalkers uh, a little bit. Did you see Maynard's uh, video where he replied to Roddy's on Twitter? I, I did not see it. You know what he said? No. Because Roddy made a video where he's like, do I look worried and stuff? He's like, Maynard, my friend from Down Under. Down Under is where you're going to be in the group. <laughs> <laughs> and, like he made jokes like that and then Maynard made a video to reply. And he's like, Roddy, after what you said, I only have one thing to, to say to you. I think you're right. <laughs> 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 it's like the uh. sickest plot twist. Very self-aware. Yeah, this uh, Rotti is going to send over his mothership core. Has a probe on the other side of the map as well. Might even build a pylon next yeah. to the orbital command. But yeah, this isn't looking great for Maynard at all. 
In fact, he might get a Nexus even. Like, he can do anything he wants. Yeah. He oh really my god. Poor yeah. Maynard. He's gonna get PTSD from this game for sure. <laughs> He's gonna wake up tonight. Ah, pylons. Piece of shit. There was his ace. Here we go. The 4th of July is very soon, but it's coming early here in this game. Yeah, I love how he lifted it. He's like, nah, actually, you know what? I can't do anything about it. Yeah, Reaper is dying left and right. Yeah, this is, uh, he killed one stalker, that's it. <laughs> I got a stalker. You and Maynard uh, had that the same uh, idea about it. And yeah, I, I was like, why is he staying? And then I realized, yeah, he just wants to get a stalker. And uh, I guess he gets it. Yeah, so uh, Rotti wins game number one in under five minutes. And uh, we'll, we'll see if Maynard has another strategy prepared, or if he's going to do the same thing which he tried against Wardy. Which might actually be a little bit better against Protoss. But... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. Uh, I, I'm not feeling Maynard's chan chances too much in this group, to be honest. Me neither. Thank God, he's a great caster, though, because we get to enjoy <laughs> his casting all tournaments. Proxima gonna be our second uh, map. What do you think about Proxima, actually? Uh, a pretty standard map. Because here's like what I think: I don't like the name and I don't like the map. I love everything that Blizzard makes. Too. That who? It. Nah, it's <laughs> Proxima is. Uh, who did you say? Hmm? Who did you say? I love everything that Blizzard makes. Oh, okay. Are you going for the in control approach? Huh? Yeah, the in control approach. I yeah. love all things Blizzard. Is I think yeah, what he said. <laughs> I want. I want to get hired for BlizzCon as well this year. Todd. <laughs> After <laughs> having this experience. Oh, you're gonna qualify right? as a player, no? Yeah, and then cast. Like, uh, get knocked out in the group stage and cast the main tournament. That's the goal. I'll be on the big stage all the time. That'd be a big paycheck. Yeah, that'd You'd be probably a make, like, thing. what? A quarter of what Taste Assist makes? <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe a quarter of what Taste Lex make on the, the first day. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Are we allowed to go? That's what Rotti asked. Go, 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 go. Oh, no, the, he picked orange. Oh. It. I guess it's easier to see than like the pink and uh, blue. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are just driving me crazy, you know. They I can't catch a break. They're like pressing and pressing. They're like Nurcio during the last challenger. Between oh. every map, he's asking the referee, "Can I use the skins?" And was it allowed? Or? Well, the the referee is like the guy that you know is Jin. He's like the yeah. most politically correct guy. Like he will never ever get mad. So every time he's like, "You cannot use skins. It is not allowed in the rules." <laughs> I'm like, just stop answering this troll and give him a warning already! <laughs> oh my god, he hosted the wrong server. Roddy! Come on, bro, you're, you're better than this! Even for you, that's like bad. Hosting the wrong server, rip. What a guy. What did you write? Oh, what did he say? What, what is Roddy? Uh. He was like uh, in the downtime. Uh, then he he's <coughs> like play this song. It's uh, you know pump me up. You know pump us up. We can do it. Like okay. That. What do you think about uh, you? You have odd music taste as well, but Roddy definitely has <laughs> some weird music choices, right? Do, like you, do you think that as well? Uh, I I don't really. Yeah, know like he I listens know. to like those football songs and stuff. Like thing thing is the most hype thing. <laughs> Like this fire and all, so I, I wouldn't ah, know. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. The but there, there is like more than that. Like if you watch his stream, you for sure have heard a couple of the songs that he listens to. Yeah, I've I've heard a couple. I don't. I, I feel like he just listens to pop music, no, and then mixed in with some with some football tunes, the fire and ones, then some uh, some other ones. Yeah, it's a. It's a Everyone has their own kind of music, but can't can't blame the you. Guy cheer you cheer for uh, Aj Ajax? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. But, but like, no, Roti. Not in a very obnoxious way, though, right? Because some people they're like, yeah, we do. Ah, no, no. Like I don't, I don't care too much. Some people are like, we, we, we're gonna beat you. We, you know, I like I like this word in sports, you know. <laughs> like, like there's a couple of players out there living in like million dollars mansions, and they're they're like here saying like, we are gonna beat you. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I, 
I don't care too much, honestly. But if if I'd have to cheer for something, I'd be cheering for Ajax. I'm a I'm a glory. I'm a trophy hunter. These, these guys <laughs> win the most trophies, so you know you cheer for them. That's what it is. Really, in life as well, not just on Tinder. I'm everywhere, man. I I want trophies everywhere. <laughs> How are you feeling actually these days, uh, like for like the tournaments that are coming up and stuff? I, yeah, not bad actually. Like, I, I'm I'm pretty confident for Valencia. Actually. Feeling good. I also felt good for good for Junket me, but then I got destroyed in the second group stage. So happens. It's, right? it's, it's it's hard to uh, judge where you are, you know. And yeah. Sometimes you just get a unlucky opponent. Yeah, Pro Gamer is like a high variance job, especially with the format. Like well, as soon as we go into the brackets, if you get like yeah. the wrong opponent and stuff. It can go south really quick. I guess the best thing you can do is just to become as solid as you can in like all matchups. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's rough sometimes, but yeah. all, all part of the deal. We do we do get to have an awful, an awful lot of so sometimes losing you know, could be worse. I had a pretty successful year last year, so can't win uh, two tournaments. So last year was your year, and then your year is over. You think, or you nah. could top that? Like, to top it, I think I'd need to win BlizzCon or something. Like, last year was good. How many tournaments you won? Three? Two. Two? Two, two tournaments. Yeah, I also like, won the, the Dutch tournament. Had so some I deep runs it. as well, right? Uh, not too many deep runs outside of it, I think. That's like some decent result, but uh, winning two tournaments is nice. It was like, there was a lot more tournaments last year, though. It was like the GPLs and the, the, some IEMs. So. Now it's uh, a little bit harder, it's only f like uh, a few main tournaments, but I'm Did you sure play uh, the Shanghai qualifiers? Ah, no, like I'm not gonna play in Korea, but uh, like my ping is terrible to Korea. I have like 500 ping or something ridiculous. So what? Just try. Ah, like I know I would just smash my keyboard. Like I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to play all day then. I'd be so angry. Yeah, not with that attitude. <laughs> 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 I love to I squeeze that line in, I almost bait it out of people. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's terrible. Like some some people, they don't actually have too bad ping to Korea. Yeah. But for some reason, I have really bad ping. Same to NA actually. But after a lot of foreigners qualified for Codes, I thought they might do well as well in the IM qualifiers. Yeah, but uh, Major didn't play the qualifier, I believe, because uh, he wasn't able to get a visa anyway, so he didn't want to try. Yeah. Uh, and like Major is probably one of the better ones that's there. He uh, got pretty far in the qualifier. Laser got a bit unlucky, like. Who did he play? I can't remember. Just remember that was a rough opponent. And Elasis uh, CPT in general isn't that good. So, as long as he gets opponents that aren't Terra, he's fine most of the time. Yeah, okay. Alright, Stargate. Going up here for Roddy. Probably some Phoenix Adept here on this map. I wouldn't put it past him, considering yeah. uh, his proxy mine. There's a lot of dead space around your base. Liberators can fly in. Drops are going to be tough to deal with. And Maynard, even proxying a cheeky. Starport, this could play right into Roddy's hand, who's going to forge early here. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But uh, this is something that Roddy used to... Uh, he would always tell me about this in HOTS as well. He's like, man, you get the forge, you get the cannon in the, the mineral line, and you're safe against Widow Mine drops. It's like, nah, man, like, that's not how you're supposed to Yeah, and then you watch Neeb, it's like... You got two cannons in your mineral lines, he has a third Nexus fully saturated. It's like, uh, yeah. maybe I'm playing this game wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't think that's the... It's the way to go. Uh, this early of a forge. Like, it's not that useful at all. Mainyard's going to try something with a, a single Hellion, but there's a nice Stalker block on the ramp for Rotti. Mainyard will spot that out with an SCV. What's coming out of the starport? A Liberate. Oh my out. god. He finds it. No! <laughs> not like this. <clears throat> I, I wonder if, uh, if Mainyard can actually do something here. What are Rotti's units? The one time that Rotti's build is going to be good with the Forge. This is this game right there. He's actually going to be thinking that his build is good now. I'm not sure if it's going to be too useful though, because he's about to get all in by Cyclone. Like, is the cannons yeah. aren't going to be able to fight the Cyclone. This actually looks a little scary for Rotti, I feel like. He only has two Stalkers and two Phoenixes, and there's two Cyclones. How is he going to kill the Cyclones? If Maynard just push up... He's going to pick him up, up and kill the rest, I guess. Starts dealing with one. Yeah, but the, the Liberator can just siege up. There's a couple Marines to back this up as well. Oh, he really should... Ah, okay. I guess this is... Uh, this is the way he's going to deal with it. Just picks up everything. 
Maynard not using the anti-air gun on the Cyclone. Oh god. Yeah. Hey, there, there's the cannon! That's what yeah, I'm talking cannon. about! Won him the game. Game winning move. Taxi is very lucky. If Rod is first Phoenix would have been across the map, maybe like this could have done more, but even then like it feels like he's just too lacking on units. Yeah. For Maynard. Very good attitude, says time to practice, says bye to everyone. And that's gonna be it. For our Check. friend from Down Under, as Roddy predicted it, he finishes Down Under in the group. But yeah. he's definitely won our hearts once again. Can't cheese a cheese hat. Says Roddy. You know that's a, a nickname for the Dutch people, cheese hats, because we eat so much cheese. Oh, there was a Dutch pun in there. Yeah. I thought that Maybe. was like a reference for you can't BS a BSer, right? Ah, uh, no, no, no. That's the more famous quote. Yeah. That's the more famous quote. But Rotti makes his own quotes. Yeah, he does. He so sure true, does. A true intellectual makes his own quotes. Yeah, he starts his own memes <laughs> as well. <laughs> Who knows? Alright, I want to remind you guys about the Maturino page that we've got set up that I've put in the title of the streams if you want to check it out. So let's have a look. Where is it? Right there. So that's the Maturino page where we're doing uh, not just crowdfunding, but there was actual rewards. Most of them already got bought, but we're also doing t-shirt sales. So those t-shirts, they're all $30. Let me show them to you. Down there, we've got quite a few of the commanders actually. We've got Pig, one for Coca, and then the Wadi, Rotti, Maynard. Actually, that's the most purchased one with eight currently. Maynard, it's like, looks pretty badass. Zombie Grub, Fear Dragon, and then one for myself. And I believe that we've got Rifkin and Artosis on the way as well. For some of those t-shirts, they are $30. Let's open this up, actually. Let's see uh, the, those exact shipping prices. So it's 30 bucks, and shipping to USA is $7.99, Canada $9.99, and worldwide $14.99. So... Make sure to check those out, guys. I think they are quite great, and uh, they will. The sales will stop as soon as the tournament ends, which is next weekend. So there is not much time if you want to get one of these. So we're gonna head to a break, and when we come back, it's the decider match between Rotterdam and Wadi. See you guys in a bit.
Welcome back everybody to the Sports Earnings Casters Invitational. Deciders match coming up. Oh my god. I was at the edge of the screen. I need to disable scrolling. It's gonna be Rotterdam against Waldy. And wow. we're gonna get started on Ascension to Ayer. Wow, the mind games. Writing in Dutch. Yeah, good luck my friend. That's what Waldy said in Dutch. Two of the biggest gamblers in the scene actually, Brody and Waldy. They really are. <laughs> home story always makes for some very interesting home story cup uh, poker games. Yeah, I, I know Wardy almost always uh, walks away with uh, quite a bit, no, at the poker table. I think he either like wins a lot or loses a lot because he plays basically every single hand. <laughs> you could raise like twenty big blinds. He would call, you know, with uh, four six Seven. offsuit and then hope to it like trips or whatever. Pretty crazy. It's very hard to put him on a hand because he could have anything. Yeah, I can imagine. But he also calls down way too much, I think so. I don't know. High, just high variance style. You play poker? Mm, no, rarely. Sometimes at events. You know, if, if we're out early, play a couple of hands of poker. Do you play chess? No, I'm not. Do you know about these guys that play chess and stuff? Like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Taste of Z's in control. They brought T Drogo as well now in it. Like, and they play yeah, each other like almost it. every day. Yeah. And apparently T Drogo like he wasn't so good at first, but now he's already beating like in control and stuff a lot. Oh, okay. Impressive. Yeah, they, they told me about it. They started at BlizzCon playing uh, chess, and after that, all of them just had this chess happening. So just playing against it. I'm not down for that kind of stuff. What what other games than uh, StarCraft do you play? I think I asked you that before. Play real life. Though. You play what real life? Tinder, no. <laughs> no, no, I don't play anything at all. I just play... Uh, there is no real life, there is only IRL on Twitch, that's the closest thing to real life. I play some... Uh, I play some StarCraft. I play... I used to play some H1Z1. Now I kind of want to get the the Battlegrounds game. Looks mm. pretty cool. So I'm thinking of getting that. How's the gym going? Uh, pretty well actually. Like I've been going a bit. I, I was uh, injured on my back, so I couldn't do like proper squats or deadlifts for a while but now I'm slowly getting back into that but uh, my legs have been have gotten pretty weak because of it so it's a bit depressing to train them. Hmm. But What's your weight? My weight right now like a 80, 88 I think. 88 and oh, a you half. weigh more, more than me. <laughs> oh really? Yeah I lost a bunch of weight. I used to be quite a bit uh, heavier. All right let's let's talk about this game before people Lose it, even though nothing happened or other than a Reaper got chased away. Yeah, so we have uh, Wardy proxying a Starport right now. Trying to chase away this Stalker. I think he'll be capable of doing it without losing the Reaper. He micros... Uh, Hashtag micro. Roddy Micro. This is actually pretty cool by Roddy. Wait, the Reaper? What? Oh, he tried to push him back in, I think. Yeah. yeah it should just uh, go up the ramp here, I feel like. Yeah, probably the right call. Alright, what the party is going to do with that star for Yeah, a liberator, I would assume. Yeah. Oh, oh no, Cloak Banshee. That's sick, actually, because Roddy might skip. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> uh, I guess, guess the robot. Right? Yeah, I was like, he's gonna get two gates, you know, maybe skip that for a little bit. Yeah, these stalkers are actually doing quite a bit, denying a lot of mining on the natural, as well as forcing the muse to be dropped into the main base. This looks quite good for Rotti. The only problem is he won't have any units at home in case uh, these Banshees start arriving. Yeah, he's getting Mothership Core, at least. If he had skipped yeah. that, that would have been a lot worse. Yeah, that thing can sure. do a lot of damage to a uh, Banshee with an uh, overcharge. Wardy is having a lot of trouble trying to secure this low ground, actually. Now with the Cyclone, he's able to push away those Stalkers, but that took a very long time. That Orbital took a lot of damage. He wasn't capable of mining for a long time. Uh, Rotti got a single worker, did uh, quite some damage on the marines, did some damage on the mine as well. So I feel like this, uh, the early game so far has been good for uh, Rotterdam. We see no observers on the map yet, but there's one on the way and a second one queued up already. So It's right across the map though. Yeah, I don't think the second one will be rallied. No, the second one is going to be rallied straight to the to the Banshee, to the, to the proxy starport. So that might be. Ah, he wants to have it down there to spot yeah. Medivacs, but instead he's gonna see a Banshee potentially. 
The Reaper gets sniped. And Banshees are gonna fly in here real soon. Oh my god, the Observer! Is this the, the magic timing? Yeah, it, it might just be. There's no still another the Observer position. on the way, by the way. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at the uh, Rotterdam position. Uh, how, how does he respond? Okay, uh, sees the clock bench now, loses two probes almost immediately. Doesn't pull the probes uh, straight away, so loses ends up losing five, uh, four workers. So yeah, that, that one dodged, uh, that one cheated death. Yeah. Went back into the Sorry, gas at the last that. second. Oh, also got a stalker, so uh, pretty decent start for Wardy, I would say. Second bench, he is also out. Uh, worker count still in favor of Rotterdam, and a tank follow-up for Wardy. At home, he's getting a couple of tanks, tech lab on his barracks, 30 C starting right now for Wardy. And this but time, this we've got a double forge. Yeah, so this is the kind of game that uh, Rotterdam wants, I feel like. The, the the longer game, especially against a probably inferior macro player than him. So, yeah, I think I think uh, Kevin is quite happy with this. Oh, somebody hears the backpipes outside. <laughs> it's funny because they are never there as well. Just today for my tournament, they were like, "Let's play some music." That's so sick. Football supporters, man. <laughs> so sick. Uh. Wardy uh, got four more probes with that one Banshee at the third base. Rotterdam keeps uh, chronoing out those probes though, just now starting to chrono his own upgrades. Still up in upgrades, but I, I feel like this hasn't been too bad for Wardy. Uh, he's uh, sending a little push across the map. There's, already, there's charge already for Rotterdam, so I'm not sure how successful this is going to be. No stim, no combat shield, no upgrades whatsoever. I don't think Wardy can really push forward here. I Seems think he like will still try to. It's without like medivacs, I hate yeah. I hate this kind of attack without medivacs. Like you at least need one to heal those as much as possible. Can't do so much over like a longer fight. Even though like Rotti already looks like he has enough to completely smash this. He's taking his time. I think he might have learned from that one game where it felt like he engaged way too early against uh, against okay. the Imre. Yeah, earlier. Yeah, I, I feel like this time he really could have jumped on top of it though. There was so little. Yeah, and uh, Rotti realizing it now, trying to chase that army. Wardy is floating a lot of money actually. Uh, Twelve hundred minerals right now. Needs to add some production. Uh, he's already getting two extra barracks, but I feel like he should just go up to eight or seven at this point almost immediately. Oh, he's gonna just hit. He's gonna be supply blocked. Yeah. Look at the supply. Ninety-three, the ninety-three. Supply. And he has no call down either. Oh, actually, he does have one. I think it's worth it to use, not to get supply block for like a super long time. Yeah, I think so too. If you still have to start a deep post, it's probably worth it. Third base flying over for Wardy right now. And uh, well, Kevin's already getting a fourth base, so he's in a great position. Still on three gas, so uh, sticking through to his style. Overcharges to try and catch the Liberator flying into his main base and starts to two at the same time as well. So Rotterdam really... Uh, Getting in his comfort zone once again, just like we saw in that game one against Imbra, where he just has that the, the game that he wants basically. He gets the prism going, starts doing some zealot run buys. And here we go, the prism flying across the map. Will most likely go into Vardy's natural, and at the same time, he might make a push into the third phase. We'll see about that. But uh, I, I think Rotterdam is happy with this position, that's for sure. You know, when I have this many Zealots like Roddy has now, I'm always so worried about facing like a huge amount of Widow Mines that will just blow everything up. I feel like the, this army has like an expiration time. When there is yeah, enough yeah. Widow Mines or even like when there is Ghosts, it becomes so much worse. Ghost is really something that uh, Rotterdam should be worried about, but Wardy seems to be taking a different route as he is getting a tech lab on the starport and a fusion core. So he's most likely going to go for a Liberator range. Uh, he already has a second starport as well with uh, the reactor, so Liberator range, triple Liberator production, and it's just going to mess up. I think this is a great strategy against what Rotterdam does. Just sit back, relax, make Rotterdam uh, attack you, or give him an army that basically consists of Zealots. And a max army consisting of Zealot isn't that great. But Roddy knows how to transition though, like eventually he'll go into double Robo Colossus, then maybe into air later. If you, if you don't like do anything to his economy and all that. Yeah, but he's been on three gas for so long. Uh, yeah. It's going to be uh, pretty difficult for him to transition. Oh uh, my god. Try dropping, loses both of the medifacts. Like, immediately. Uh, 
That's a, a little bit sloppy. Roddy is actually streaming, guys, by the way, if you want to check it out. If you want to see that speed, that Roddy micro, that speed, that power, that momentum. Actually, uh, I think Roddy lost his prism at the same time that Wardy lost two with his meta pack, so I guess that's why the supply is still so close. How often do you watch uh, Roddy stream? Uh, well, when he's streaming. I, I think I watch it. I at least watch like uh, every day for a little, you know. Yeah, I, won't I think everyone does. Or like a lot of people. Yeah, you just you just click it. You stick around for a bit. If it's interesting or it's a sick game going on, I watch or if I'll vote. otherwise, I'll go on with my bit. Yeah, okay. Roti right now doesn't have that great of an arm. It's just mainly salads. And if Wardy can hit a big two-two timing, that could be very dangerous for Rotterdam. There's already one Liberator, three more on the way, so he could hit with potentially seven Liberators with range. That could be really dangerous, especially in combination with those tanks. Rotterdam is going to try to make something work with this push. I'm not sure how well it's going to work out. Going in with all the Zealous Widomai is doing quite a decent amount of damage, but Roddy might just have enough units. No, Wardy's reinforcements on the top are going to clean up all of those Zealots. But a lot of SCVs are dying in the meantime. Yeah, but uh, Emerald he trades, which is important because his army was pretty bad and now he can replace these bad salads with better units. And like you mentioned, 23 SCVs dying at the same time, so uh, heavily crippling Wardy's economy. If Wardy had transferred, he would have been fine here. Uh, yeah, if, if Wardy would have transferred here, for sure he would have been. Uh, Double Colossus yeah. production now begins and Wardy has no idea, so it's not like he's going to be getting a ton of Vikings. No, he, need, he needs to rebuild the, the Metafax first and then he'll probably go back into Liberator production because that was his initial plan, but right now uh, it's not looking that great anymore as it was before the fight. I felt like if, if Wardy was allowed to max out, get a 2-2 push going, he really would have a good chance in the fight. Like even yeah. now he was down 30-40 supply, half of his army wasn't there and he, he, he had a really nice fight there I think. To be fair, Rotti's engagement wasn't that great, just walking into the Widow Mines, getting all of the Zealots splashed, but I, I felt like Wardy had a bit of a chance there. I have a question. What do you think is the good location to put the second Robo in the Robo Bane? Like, what about where Rotti put it? Yeah, I'm not a fan of where Rotti put it. I think at the third base, if you take that fourth base, it's fine. Otherwise, at the natural is a good place, I think. But not in the main next to the first Robo? Uh, I feel like that's more likely to be dropped than the, the yeah. natural is. But also it's less less exposed from like an attack outwards, which is where your army would be. I don't know, like, I feel like everywhere I put it, there's still going to be weaknesses. There's not like one clean place you can put it. Sure, a little bit of an engagement in the middle of the map. Uh, some storms going down. Rotti trying, attempting some kind of zealot run by and following up with his main army. Uh, I wonder if he can just straight up break this. He does have four Templar, three of them have a storm, two Colossus with extended rain, uh, extended thermal land. He needs a prism. Oh, I think if Roddy attacks there, land storms and then reinforce with the prism, he just wins. There's not even that many medivacs. Look at them. They're struggling yeah. to heal everything. Yeah, you, you might be right. There's there is two more liberators on the way. So once those two come out, I feel like Wardy should be able to stabilize at least a little bit. Um, but if Rotti managed to hit before that, yeah, it's going to be a very hard defense for uh, for Wardy for sure. Bit of a drop going down at the, the fourth base of Rotterdam, but doesn't do too much. Gets cleaned up relatively easily by a, war a Zealot Warpin and a High Templar. I think Rotti's about to go for it. He's maxed out, he's building a bank, no reason not to. He's 3 3. I can just do 2 2 or Wardy. Ah, uh, the, the Liberators are almost like discouraging to go, but he's, he has so much anyway, like that if Storm lands, I think he still wins. Yeah, there's so many Widow Mines as well. Yeah, that's he, the big he really problem. Needs be, he needs to uh, clean up some of these Widow Mines, and the Liberator count just keeps growing and growing. And Rotti doesn't really need to attack, he's so far ahead in the economy at this point, that there's no real reason for him to go, except if he really wants to finish it. He might actually just have the army to, uh, to go in though. Does he have an Observer with this? I don't see one. Like yeah, there's one up above. Oh, I think yeah, he just unleashed the F2. You see the observer no, no, at the no, top? No. He didn't F2 it, he did, he did grab it, but... Okay, yeah, the Phoenix is actually still across the map. That one Archon on the left-hand side, I guess he stormed some SCVs. And then yeah, made an Archon. Some SCVs. 
You should really repair that. Oh my god, then. whoa! He was on move command here for a long time. Yeah, trying to get out of those liberator zones. I'm not sure if that was the best move. Uh, Wardy should reposition those liberators right now. Only Colossus left here. There's no real support for those Colossus. Um, I think it's still going to be enough for Rotterdam. No, it's not. There's a, another little task force uh, coming from the third base. It's going to clean up all of those Colossus. Wow. Man, Colossus are powerful. Yeah, I mean, 3-3 three, three against 2-2 two, two as well. That helped a lot. Ah, right, right. They're just not dying. What is going on? Get that yeah, guy. One more goes down. Yeah, but Wardy doesn't have the money to replace anything at this point. This was... Uh, all or nothing for him as well, just before his 3-3 finish, which uh, made that fight go so terribly. Yeah, that, that supply, I not look looking at too the good. Supply. Oh, I am, look at the money. You bet your ass I am! <laughs> <laughs> Three observers above four widow mines. It's almost comical to look at this. Alright, I guess it's Carrier's time. Uh, three carriers being produced, as you well as plus one. Carriers is better than Tempest here? No, no way. Well, like, I don't think at this point it matters. No. They, like, double the supply. He has, uh, like, more probes, more income, more back. Uh, I think Roti could could be building Phoenixes with range at this point and win, so... I don't think it really matters uh, what he does, but... I think in general, Tempests are a bit better. Yeah, the e controller you saw like earlier, he was going carries and now Roddy's as well. Maybe it's for the show, I don't know. Look at that third robo, by the way, where it is. On the new base again. Yeah, it's uh, nice and exposed. But Wardy hasn't been dropping a lot, so maybe that's the reason why Roddy does it. Yeah, I just, I'm just thinking, like, you know, in a closer game. Could have yeah, been not the best move. For sure. Decent Storm going down on the SCP, doesn't get any of them. I'm going down on some of the Widow Mines, kills one, a couple of Marines go down as well, but I, I don't see any way for Wardy to come back into this game, honestly. He has uh, six Widow Mines left, three Liberators and three Medivacs, and then a, couple, a handful of Bio Units. Uh, Rotterdam's economy is so insane at this point. Does he have Graviton Catapults? Yeah, he already does. Yeah. Plus two air attacks. More plasma shield upgrades. Roddy's getting everything that he wants, and Wally just kind of randomly gonna tap out, realize he doesn't have enough anyway. And Roddy takes game number one here. Yeah, and uh, very close to advancing in the second position here. I'm watching his stream real quick. I want to see uh, the facial expression. I want to see the relief. <laughs> I guess he knew he had one for some time anyway. He must be pretty stressed though, because losing that first series against Simray definitely. Uh, must not have been too happy about it. Yeah, for sure. And I think, like, Roddy always has, like, big expectations, you know, like, anything he participates in, even though he's not a pro player, he's like, I want to do well, like, I'm going to train for it and, like, take, se take it seriously. Yeah, he's definitely a, a competitor at heart. I'm surprised you don't have more viewers actually for this, around like 600 I think right now. Definitely one of the more popular uh, StarCraft 2 streamers out there. Yeah. The Roddy yeah. army, man. Are you a sub to Roddy? No, no, no. Not a sub to Roddy. Why not? You don't like that Roddy P? I, 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 don't, I don't have as much to spend yet. I guess after this tournament I do. Oh snap. <laughs> it's gonna be justified. <laughs> no, now I can finally. Can, can sub to everyone I want to for years to come. Yeah, that's sick. A, a whole thousand dollars for you. A, a whole thousand dollars. I Damn. Can, I can Don't spend it all in one place. Yeah, I, I can sub to Roti for like the next 10 years. <laughs> I could even get like the expensive sub. Yeah. yeah I, can, I can do whatever I want. Too bad you won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roti is feeling it. Alright, we're ready. You know, I'm the one editing the graphics, like the score and all that. You're the, the host, by the way. Oh, yeah. God damn it. I would think, like, that a way to avoid me getting host every time would be to write in an email. Don't give me host also when we're going to game, but then they still wouldn't read the email and do it. So I'm not even <laughs> going to do that. Yeah, I was saying, like, you know, like, I'm... 
do you know how I edit the graphics? Because I don't know how to use Paint or GIMP that well. I use MS Paint and I control uh, control C, control V, copy paste. Like <laughs> yeah, like the the score numbers are like uh, numbers from Paint. You know, you can write text. Yeah, yeah. That that's how bad I am with like all this stuff. Yeah. But hey, it's working and it looks decent, so why not? Yeah. Alright, let's go. Game number two here. Starting in the bottom side of the map, playing as the Orange Polos. It is Rot Rotterdam. El Roti, I call him. Is there like a a saying with like a, for the Dutch, like Orange, whatever, like a song or something? What do you mean? I don't know, like uh, they are called Orange, right? With a J. Orange? Yeah, 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 yeah. So is there a song or like a quote, a motto, something? Like where were the, the, the orange lines, I think. That's what we are. But, uh, do you say, like, for example, in France, we say Allez les Bleus. Allez les Bleus. Uh, uh, <laughs> Orange Boven? I'm not sure what we have. I guess that would be the closest. We just. I'm not sure if we have anything like Allez les Bleus. Alright. Why don't you. Ah, okay, wait. We have, uh, we have Hup Holland Hup, but not with uh, Orange. Okay. So, yeah, that, that, that would be our, uh, that would be our, our motto, our, our fighting words, I guess. Would you like to introduce our Terran player? Yeah, for sure, for sure. In the, the top side of Proxima Station, spawning as the pink Terran player, it is Wardy representing the United Kingdom. He really insists on playing uh, as pink as well. Yeah, he, because he, he, he switched earlier to blue and now he's back to pink, so he had to do that manually. And only because I told a stupid story about switching colors and whatever. <laughs> He thinks he's allowed to do it. No, Wardy, you're not allowed to do it. This gonna, he's gonna get fined for this. <laughs> yeah, I told him I'm gonna find you. Since he's, points. I don't think he's very likely to advance. Like, no, no, no offense, but his price pool's already gonna be pretty low. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna <laughs> find him for like twenty dollars out of his fifty. You know, like, that'd be a bit of a dick move. Do you remember back in the day in the ESL Pro Series, you would have to write like the the match statement before you played. Yeah, I got a couple of funny stories about this as well. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I wrote like a couple of match statements that were like really bad. I wrote one that was like way too short. And then the guy was like, your statement is way too short. Like uh, you need to make it longer, otherwise you're going to get penalty points. So I was like, oh yeah. So I went to it and I was like, I wrote, I'm only adding right now a couple more words because I was told my statement is too short. So here's my statement. Now it's longer. <laughs> and then the guy <laughs> gave me penalty points for this as well. <laughs> what is this? So sick, man! I I just can't win. <laughs> man, you are such a smart ass. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand. They were only trying to promote us, and it didn't work with them at all. Like These a typical pro gamer, trying their hardest to make you guys famous, to get some hype going for the match. But no, too big to write a match state. What do you think about the whole? debate of like you know some players not being uh, as entertaining as they could be you know just always saying the respectful thing and yeah, we should remove these players from the competition and let the entertaining players play just make it like a, a more of a talent show you know? so what, it's just you against Avilo or something like yeah 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 it's <laughs> like <you> get <laughs> every final like 50% gets decided by the games and then 50% by Maybe some uh, some entertainment judges, like on yeah. Factor or something. And then the final vote goes to like the crowd or the audience who can send text to a certain number. That's also a nice way to raise the price with them. Yeah, but then Just Stefano like will be the best foreigner again. Uh, no, we got like the judges, you know? So the judges, yeah. they can just, they can stop anyone. They can create storylines by themselves. And we can rig the maps a bit. Like at that point, it's just a talent show. So we don't have to stay truthful to the game anymore. We're going very sure. far with this, like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's next? We're gonna have to like the purge in StarCraft or something. <laughs> 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 I'd be wondering who would survive. <laughs> hey, I wonder. That's that's movie is actually quite sick. Yeah, I I only watched the uh, I think Election Day. The, I think that's the third. Yeah. yeah. One. Oh, actually, you should watch the other ones. Like the first two are better, I think. Oh, actually, I didn't see the third one, but I would assume movies always get worse by the third one. I, th I like the first and second one. Okay. You yeah, know, I, the, I, I, 
The funny you know. thing about this is that I feel it's not we're not so far away from a reality like this, right? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I we always just have a country where we can one uh, day a year. I always thought that a businessman being elected president or like someone saying really like really obnoxious stuff being elected president was never going to happen and then here we are. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? Couple maybe 2020. Just like that. One day in America. The you see 4th like, of July. You see the Zergs with Max mask on the streets and shotguns and stuff coming for you? I'd just be hiding. You get in a bunker? Yeah, but like you can break into any house, like in the movie. Yeah, I mean, the, like I'd just be, I, I'd stay up all night, just like focus on the one door that I have in my apartment with literally my gun. Just. Sounds like somebody drink. has been playing some Battlegrounds! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just drinking coffee. <laughs> Just making sure I stay awake. Yeah, like I, I'm not dying in the purge, man. I'm not dying. You know, in uh, Battlegrounds, actually, there's third person. So technically, there is a couple of houses where you can only enter from uh, one de one uh, stairway. So if you step up that stairway and you look down in third person, you can see the guy come up, but he can't see you. So you just like <laughs> go out and shoot at the same time. It's like, super silly. It's like almost impossible to lose a fight this way. Oh, that sounds like a great thing. Yeah, they're really selling it well. So like sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes some people like you got a, like a whole squad surrounding you and stuff, and you're in that house with your friends, and they know they can't come inside, so they'll, they'll just throw grenades inside to try and kill you. Well, that sounds like a good time actually. Yeah, quick fourth base for Roti. Yeah. She's on the goal base. He's just playing his, uh, his standard style here. One it's one uh, on the way. It really seems like it's now his standard style to stay on three gases, make a lot of uh, gateways, and get a ton of yeah. zealots really. Yeah, wondering uh, when we'll see the prism come out. And on this map, it's very good because there's the gold as well, so they'll have lots of money to uh, to get zealots. Just adding six more gateways as we speak already has three done. So How many gates do you think you should get to support like this amount of bases and the gold in particular? I think twelve, maybe uh, the perfect amount. But I'm I'm not too sure honestly about that. I I don't play uh, this kind of style that often, and he doesn't really seem to have any kind of gassing. A well, double. Uh, Double drops going down right now. Two double drops being uh, being sent out for Wardy, and mm. they got spotted by Rotterdam. Because yeah. Rotty has uh, a ridiculous amount of observers. Yeah, he has a bunch of sick observers, like in places where he tries to oh. see where the medivacs are gonna fly by. Oh my god, this is just a repeat of last, last game. Yeah, the, this one didn't really do too well, but there's still two medivacs going into the third base right now. And what does Rotty really have at the third base? There's nothing there. Mothership core is in the main base, so if these guys manage to to, to set up into the natural, maybe we'll be able to get a couple of probes. Wardy is still in a in a pretty good position, I would say. We've got two two on the way. Upgrades on par with Rotterdam at this point. He's just a little bit behind in supply, but once his extra barracks finished and his second star, but should be fine. Uh, drop does get spotted. Mines get decent hits, kill two zealots, and damage a couple of others. Damn. If my observing is really sub part of this game. I need to step up. Oh! Bring forward. Gets one of the medivacs. I think yeah, but against this style, you need ghosts for sure. Like, it's just so hard. If Roddy can yeah, get yeah. in his position where he's on four bases and just like swarming with zealots, it just became, becomes insanely hard. Yeah, and that, that observer outside the base of uh, Wadi on the third base, he needs to snipe that as well because he every time spots how much units are going in what direction. Yeah, for sure. That would be uh, definitely a good one. Yeah, we see a fusion core going down once again for Wardy. So it's going to go into his Liberator range once again. No Ghost uh, Academy as of yet, though. Terran ship weapons level 1 being researched. We see uh, a Prism uh, moving out for Rotti right now. Will probably be spotted by this one lone Marine at Wardy's forward base. Will he see it? Yeah, he does see it. So good spotting there by Wardy. I'm very curious uh, what Wardy's plan is. You think he's just going to hit a big 2 2 timing? Uh, I mean, when I see him go for uh, fusion core, I'm thinking he might want to take his sweet time and just take the fourth base. But then, what surprises me is that there's still no ga no ghost academy, so I don't think he should attack. But I'm worried he might, as you talk well, about. What, it. what when? He, what about when he's maxed though, with like uh, six, seven liberators? I think that might be a good. Yeah, if there is no AOE, then sure. If there is no high templars or uh, colossus, he might be able to do well. Actually, you're right. 
Okay, Prism does get into the main base right now, and this also triggers Rotti to move out and uh, try to do some damage at Wardy's third base. Wardy is not set up there, mines not burrowed, Liberators not set up at all. Wardy does manage to stim, sets up the Liberators, but it might just be too late. Oh my god, there's Everything so much. Everything is in the main base right now. In the natural, there's just so much. SCV is being pulled off the line, but Zealots actually got hit quite a bit by those Widowman detonations there. Wardy trying to defend as well as he can. This time around, unlike in the last game, I thought he was going to evacuate with SCVs, but they're kind of just standing there trying to wall Zealots off away as Rotti reinforces with way more Zealots and there's just going to be too much. Rotterdam advances on to the round of 8. Congratulations to him. Yeah, impressive play. Uh, for a second I thought Wardy was going to hold, but uh, one more warp in went through in the main base and that kind of sealed the deal for Rotterdam. Even though he was attacking up a ramp, it didn't really seem to matter. So, well played by him, taking down Wardy 2-0 after dropping uh, to Imra earlier on. So, uh, we, we got our two, uh, our two group winners now. Yeah, that was a quick group today, actually, compared to yesterday. Yesterday we had way longer series and games. Today was, like, super straightforward, for sure. And Rotty taking second place, that's very interesting. I could actually meet him now in the, in the round of eight. That's a possibility. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? <laughs> it definitely would be. Um, let me show the updated bracket real quick. Group B, boom. So yeah, France and Netherlands prevail today. UK and uh, Australia not doing so well. I guess Australia will get to redeem themselves later on uh, with Pig coming into play and being one of the favorites, I think, to do well. Yeah, definitely. So... Once again, I'm just going to show the Maturino page for you guys, so you can have a quick look at what's happening there. Make sure to send some love towards uh, eSports earnings as well. Check out the website. It's a great website with a lot of data. Actually, yeah, I'll show, I'll show a quick preview here of what uh, eSports earnings like as well. Let's the see. The graphic or the actual website? Oh, the actual website. <laughs> Yeah, that, that actually, yeah, the good you remind me, I'll show that as well in a bit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is esportsearnings.com, a website where you can find all data about prize money that has been won in tournaments across all sorts of games. So if we click at games over there, you can see like Dota is the game that has had the most prize money distributed in tournaments, then League of Legends, Counter-Strike, StarCraft, and then you can go down to... How many games is there? They're like a top 100 right there with Soul Calibur in 100th place. StarCraft 4th place, that's actually quite high. Yeah. And if you want to see more specifically, you can click on StarCraft, you can see the tournaments that had the largest prize pools that were uh, given towards StarCraft players. Then you got the top players, MC in 1st place, the highest earning foreigners, Snoot, Nurture and Stefano. All around 300k, not bad. Where are you at, Harstam, actually? All the way down, my friend. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> Let's do a research. Let's dive into Harstam's life. Oh, they took a terrible old photo. 72,115.65 dollars. And most of it was made uh, last year. 37,000, man. I hope nobody from the IRS uh, is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they have no clue thought. <laughs> yeah, the two first places from last year actually gave you most uh, most of that. Yeah. Oh, you got the I-51 uh, win actually from 2014 registered on this. Didn't you remember that one, did you now? Yeah, I did, I did, of course. I'll never forget those wins. Wait, how did you make 20 bucks when you were 17 years old? You know? Apparently you made 20 bucks in a tournament. Good job to you. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Appreciate it. That's it for the eSports earnings website. I'll just show you guys quick the eSports earnings rankings. Yeah, because, you know, I've done my research and I know who's earned what. So, casters in this tournament, we get to try and uh, get some more of these eSports earnings. Which actually, it all originates from a meme, you know. Like, people very often get very confident in StarCraft and think they're the men, they're the shit, but... I had to remind a couple of them how much have you earned, you know, by playing this game because you think you seem to think you're so good. Why don't you go and visit eSports earnings? So it all started out as a joke and then it ended up 
becoming a reality when I asked them if they would like to sponsor it and then they said yes. So here we are with an invitational tournament. And now let's take a quick look once again at the Maturino page. So Maturino is a crowdfunding page that helped me set up this for the tournament to uh, build up the prize pool, also help pay uh, Harstem, who's getting paid a thousand bucks to cast this. Good job to you, man. Too bad it doesn't go towards eSports earnings, you know, you could be catching up a little bit quicker. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll be as great as you are. <laughs> One so of these days. You guys got all details about the tournament there, the whole s schedule. And we do, uh, we're doing uh, t-shirt sales for 30 bucks. You can get a t-shirt of your favorite caster. There's not all of them, but there's most of them. There's still some more coming. I would say my personal favorite is probably Rotti and Maynard. I guess mine is cool as well, but it's one of mine, so... How, how cool can it be, really? Like, not that cool. Ah, Fear Dragon. So I, everybody's good. Zombie Grub, Fear Dragon. How many, uh, how many shirts have you sold? To me? So far, yeah. Four so far. Uh, it's gonna go up. People need to get the Todd shirt. <laughs> and then, uh, then I'll, I'll sign it. I'll sign Luke at the supply on the side. <laughs> 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 if they bring it to a tournament, it's gonna be epic. All right, that's this is it for today. Uh, any last few words, shout outs before we go off and we'll come back tomorrow? A uh, big shout out to you for hosting it and esports earnings, of course, for uh, providing part of the prize pool and the bands. So, uh, yeah, that's it. See you guys tomorrow, I guess. Actually, wh what do you think about tomorrow's group? Peak against Funka and then Emil Zombie Grub. I, I, I'm not sure, honestly. Like, I, th I think Pig is the clear favorite in that group, but uh, second place could go to anyone, I feel like. I, I'm feeling Funka a little bit, though. Okay. Sounds fair. All right, guys, thank you for watching. We're back tomorrow with this group right there, Group C. For now, uh, we're done. Congratulations to Imre and Roti making it today. We'll see you back tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time. See you then.